All right, this is uh, Monday, May 23rd at one o'clock. It's a special personnel committee meeting. Um, I'd like to call to order and knowledge that the press has been public and have been duly notified of the meeting in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. All members are present of the committee. Uh, the purpose is to review, to interview candidates for the ATAX Advisory Committee and the Planning Commission vacancies and, and make a recommendation to appointment to the city council. So the way we're gonna do this is interview each uh, candidate. Uh, it'll be public, but we'll do it one at a time, I think, and ask everybody else to, to step out, right? And interview. So the first one will be uh, by saying it's Chrissy, right? Yes. So if the rest of you could step out and then we'll, uh, or the other candidates at least. It was everybody the step other out. The candidate should step out. Yeah, the other candidates should step out. Yeah, other candidate should step out. Anybody in attendance can stay. Chrissy, if you want to come up here to the table and we'll make sure that mic's on. Thanks for coming today. All right. So Chrissy, I'd just like to start off uh, and ask you why you want to be a part of the ATAX committee. <laughs> Um, well, I'm just learning a little bit about the and I think it's trying to decide where to put up my radar, so it's different, and I'm very interested in And why don't you just, the second thing, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and especially you say you, you have some involvement with Explore Charleston to kind of hit on that a little bit as well as your other background. Um, my husband and I have been at the company for three locations thus far. And with Max, we're involved in Explore. Uh, now we have our marketing director that's directly involved with it. Um, we will be meeting, there is a meeting set up with the committee for Allender as well. Um, so I don't know the exact ins and outs of what we do with them. I'm just on the peripheral. Okay. <laughs> we have Allender 71. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Long time coming. We're excited about it. Um, so with that, and we will be having our, I'll be directly speaking directing marketing dollars um, as well with Islander. So I'll open it up to the other committee. No, you go you go first, please. Um, Chrissy, can you give us a little uh, rundown of your background and how that might apply when you're doing the evaluation process for requests for funding uh, from somebody who's looking for seeking a tax dollars? Um, well, I've lived on the island for 17 years. Uh, not necessarily in the direction that I'd like to see it grow. Um, and I don't know if I'd I, I like to dig deeper into where our marketing dollars are going. So we're going to, um, making sure that, um, that we're using them effectively. I've been in the restaurant business all my life. I think um, the restaurants here on the island are fantastic. I'm not necessarily sure that the marketing dollars have um, gone to highlight the wonderful restaurants we have and the businesses that we have here. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of a lot of the dollars have been directed at um, the hotels, the the wild duties, the area, um, um, and the vacation rentals, not necessarily the hospitality. Okay. Um, I'd just like to hear a little bit more about your experience with Explore Charleston. Was that a, your restaurant over in Sullivan's Island? Yes, Max One Coastal Cantina. Uh, we have three West Ashley, Sullivan, and uh, North Mount Pleasant. And oh, okay. I'm not directly involved mm -hmm. in the peripheral of, of that. Um, Morgan Curley, which is our uh, direct brand development director, um, who 
results I've, that we're seeing are marketing at Island Turkey. It's directly involved with the Port Charles. Okay. Um, and like I said, we have a meeting with them, I believe, this week. So I'll get to know a little bit more about what they do. And I do have some friends from uh, Monarch and Dorothy Charleston as well. Um, and I'll be able to talk with them a little bit more um, about exactly what's going on with Island Park. There's a lot going on, yeah. yeah. And again, I just scratched the surface, so I need to do my due diligence. Okay. Look at it and see what's going on. So. I'm, I'm just learning, and I'm still in the learning phase, I think, of learning about the ATEX money, what it can be used for, their different pots and everything else. And the one that we're most interested in is the marketing portion Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Um, and it has very uh, definite uses that it can be used for. Um, but there is, I think we can be creative in figuring out how they can best be served, serve Isle of Palms. Um, and I don't know, what, are you aware of the problems we've been having here on the Isle of Palms that we don't think we've been getting our fair share of Absolutely. attention, I guess is the best way to put and, it. And I think you're correct with that. Okay. Um, so that I think the one thing that I'd like to know from, from the candidates though, is that you're an advisory committee for council and we wanna make sure that that's the approach that you take. Um, I know in, in my, my work, I was always a consultant, so I was always advising whoever it was. And um, generally we would try to, to give more than one option to whatever the board or committee or entity that was that we were presenting to. And I would hope that we could expect that from our ATEX members in the future is that we don't just get, this is the way to do it and we're not gonna talk about anything else. Well, being in the restaurant business, we have to find and leave all the time. Okay. We come up with a plan A, B, and C. Okay. Um, and that, that's the way I would approach this as well. Okay. Um, anything else? So, Chrissy, that, that, what we're doing here is we're, we're interview candidates, and um, there's one for hospitality. Or actually, there's two for hospitality and then one applicant. Uh, one for the cultural arts and then one at large. So we'll be making recommendations uh, to council that will vote tomorrow night on that. So, all right. Yes, thank you for your thank time. You thank you for applying. Did you send in this uh, Barb when you go out? Barb. Oh, okay. She's the next one. Good afternoon. afternoon. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, good. Thanks for coming. Um, so this is you're you're uh, applying for the A tax committee, which is going to be the the position I think you're qualified for is for the cultural arts. So why don't you start off and just tell me uh, or tell us why you want to be a part of the A tax committee? Well, I've been a resident of the island. Of is there anything in particular that uh, has your interest around this particular committee? Well, well, first of all, it's available. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's an opportunity to present things to the city that may be a little bit, uh, you know, not the normal stuff. I'm not familiar with the budgeting and how ATAC money is Rightly so, for yeah. and fire things, but uh, we also have the uh, events that can help in the off season. Frankly, I think we have enough tourists in the business. Mm -hmm. but yeah. The off season, I think, is when. Uh, yeah. And then, generally, why don't you just tell us about yourself and your background? You know, you've been on the island a long time, and we're was on, or you were on council as well. But right. what else about your background? Uh, married for 15 years. 
Now, yeah. um, I, I was a professional photographer for a period of time, uh -huh. and now I do some graphic design and also do some graphic arts um, of the island on the turtle team, on the Marine Mammal Stranding Network. So I just uh, sort of miss being involved, I guess. Oh. I'll open it up to the other council members as well. Go ahead, Jen. Well, um, thank you for your service, and I'm glad you, we didn't burn you out the first go, first two go rounds. So. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, I think it's wonderful that uh, someone with you that has that kind of depth of background um, is impressive, and hopefully we'll get the ATAX committee back up and running very quickly. Um, as you know, we there are four vacancies now, so it will be it will be a new committee. Um, that is reconstituted, yeah. Um, do you have any thoughts or, or ideas about what um, what we can do better or? Um, well, I, I know there's been an issue with the amount of money that goes to the Charleston Zoo. Yeah. And that's really their, their victim of their own success. So they're getting that amount of money because the tax has increased over the years so much. But instead of being critical of them, perhaps we need to go back to where our representatives and get that percentage change that 30 percent is arbitrary and I, I would think other towns that are big day tax do a lot of really good work i'd be interested in doing that also and just cut down 15 percent that would give us more money in our personal budget to be able to spend as well so. that's that's the thought i'd had to yeah that's it's harder. It's it's a hard way to, to go at it, but it's it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Controversy disappears. Yeah, but the original legislation was set. They probably never envisioned the pot getting this large. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah
use that to better improve ourselves. Uh, Folly Beach has set up their own um, visitors bureau, DMO, direct marketing organization. And uh, we talked to, we, they, they came and made a presentation to us, which was very interesting. Um, but that may not be the way we want to go because for this, the reason that you said, which, which is that we basically end up having a marketing firm as part of our entity, you know, sort of. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are still more on the residential field now. Yeah. The downtown I don't know what their intent is. Sure ours is huge. Yeah, ours is the largest. And of course, we've got Wild Dunes, the resort that none of the other islands have that large until you get to Hilton Head or um, Kiowa is a resort, but it's, it's such a different animal. That's all it is. Um, so anyway, it's a thorny issue. And um, I don't think it has to be. There's got to be a way that this can work itself. Well, I'm glad. Not, not find, you know evil behind every, every palm tree. I mean, there's got to be a way to work together. Support the project. I think that's what we're hoping some way, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I'm, I'm fine. All right, well, thank you. I know. Just quick, a, Barbara, quick just interview, a, yes. Just a status update, Ms. Bergworth, is that we'll be making recommendations on this committee to council that will vote tomorrow night. So where it goes. Yeah. Hi, Barb. Hi, Barb. Hi. <clears throat> if I may, Rebecca yeah. is outside. She was yeah. in the second group of people. That yeah. Can we go ahead and interview her? I, now? I was going to say, why don't we do that? Because you guys are seem to be going in less than 10 minutes. And if yeah. we've done her in less than 10 minutes, and now yeah. the time for Ben to come on. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, Can we get that 2 30 moved up? <laughs> he might come early like she did. I don't know. Oh, it the one that's on the. Right. If he comes early, then yes. Yeah. It'll depend on everybody else. Just come right to the table. Oh, yeah. yep. All right. Thank you for coming, Ms. Kovalich. Yeah. So you're you're uh, interviewing for the open a tax committee position. Yes. Um, and I think you're an at large uh, in the at large group of the open position. So um, just to start off, why do you want to be a part of the a tax committee? So a little bit about your background. I, I mean, you hit on some of it, but it seems like you have a you have a, a science background, right? Back in and uh, business, yeah. yeah. Is there anything you can elaborate on your background that would maybe make you, um, especially as it would highlight your capabilities towards a an ATEX or serving on a on a committee, government committee? Ride. 
Council. Um, tell me, um, I understand that you might have, you, you have followed the ATAX committee uh, fairly closely. Tell me um, how you see the situation that is set up now and um, what, what issues we have going forward. Uh, if there's a way to provide it all and not duplicate the 
Rebecca, there are uh, there's a lot of other money in the ATAX money that comes in. They go to other uh, things like services, headcount, some infrastructure. Are there any projects or things that you see that could be uh, where the funds could be allocated for the island today to support tourism where they're not being allocated? I like 
Um, just one thing, and that is what we're talking about. I think I may be wrong about this, but I think the ATAX committee is specifically the 35% that's used for marketing only, mm -hmm. which is one of our problems. No, it's not. Okay, it's all of it. So I guess it's the marketing money that's our biggest problem because it's more than we that we think is being spent appropriately now. So um, I, that I think is what I would like to see um, the committee put their thinking caps on and come up with some very creative ideas, more than one that we can uh, look at to see how we can better market ourselves to bring people here. Um, and so that that's my one request, but it's not a question. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Thank All you. right. Well, thank you for coming in. Just to get you know, the our committee will be um, recommending uh, three. It looks like three uh, of the eight tax committee positions to council for tomorrow night's vote. Uh, so then we'll we'll make a decision tomorrow night at council. Thank you. So, Nicole, I guess we're going to do some video. Uh, yeah, Mr. Marks on Desiree's computer. Yeah, he's not showing up yet, but I know he. Are we doing might. it up here or are we doing it? No, up? we're doing it in. Oh. This is Jeff. Wait, you're on. Oh, now that's creative. <laughs> yes, you are. It's laying on the table. Oh, fuck. When the new when the new audio visual comes in, hopefully it'll be overwhelmed. It'll be, be so amazing. Well, is it compared to this? Yeah, I'm just gonna say it out loud. It is. Oh, okay. There we go. Then we're gonna put you up on the big screen. <laughs> Larger than life. There we go. Does he need that mic up against him? I don't know. I can, I can just project my voice. Oh, you're, you're doing go. good. Oh, That's great. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that mic on? It was right. when Chrissy was talking. I turned it off for Chrissy. All right. 
How are we going to get you? Let's see. All right. Go. We're trying to. Kind of a young victory. As Amy said, oh, we're in Max that. Headroom. There we go. Yeah, he's There we go. Oh, well, now uh, we can't hear Now him. we don't have any sound at all. Not how many people. Oh. Can you hear us, Beth? Oh, now we can hear him. Very good. Turn it up a little bit if you can. All right. Well, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, you better. <laughs> All right. Thank you for uh, making yourself available today. And uh, you're you're uh, applying for the Open Eight Tax Committee, and I think you're a part. You're applying for one of the cultural art positions. Uh, hey, well, there, there are. You actually uh, with me, you get a, a buffet of options uh, yeah. because my wife and I operate a. Um, I don't, well, my wife and I have a we have a C cabin that we operate as a short term rental, uh -huh. and then. Um, I guess also I work for a German company and we are, as of last week, now headquartered on Isle of Palms. And um, so I don't know if that, if that also has any influence, but I don't think that matters in this case. Yeah, well, we'll get to that maybe. I'd like to learn more about okay. that. <laughs> uh, first of all, why, why do you want to be a part of the ATAX committee? Well, I've been, I lived on Isle of Palms for, let's see, 17 years and you know just spend the time I was bartender the windjammer uh spent plenty of time um uh spent plenty, uh, spent plenty of time at local local establishments you know making sure that the economy keeps running smoothly um, <laughs> and then uh and want to make sure that well i would i would i would really like to have some input and even just a little more insight into how we use uh, how we use the money uh, to have maybe a little bit of say, hopefully that I can uh, represent maybe something different than what is currently in position. Uh, the, 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 the remaining members of the ATAX committee, um, I knew a lot of the people who left. Uh, so I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if there's now uh, a need for someone to um, Represent, represent the interests of those who decided to leave. Um, and mostly, I think I, I, I'm just really, really keen that we're uh, moving, moving forward in a productive direction and building something that will help get Isle of Hobbs through, uh, through all of the, the growth of the greater, greater Charleston area. All right. I mean, we can probably hit on some of those items a little bit more, but one in your your background, it looks like. Uh, why don't you explain a little bit of your your background and maybe highlight what you just mentioned uh, around you know being headquartered, uh, your business being headquartered here on Isle of Palms, and what happened and what business is it? Right. So I worked for a German software company. I joined them a year ago. I used to work for a company named Adobe. Probably heard of it. Uh, Having been acquired, so my job for years has been building, uh, building, and well, understanding uh, communities and ecosystems. Uh, so I was kind of sat at the head. Uh, the company that I worked for that was acquired by Adobe. I uh, was kind of the, the 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 face of that that ecosystem, and so I spent way too much time on airplanes, uh, traveling around, and but really making sure that the uh, that the community of users. And companies that made up that ecosystem that their that their needs were, were heard and ultimately addressed by the company. Um, and so the company I work for now is uh, very much in the same in the same style, but is really only known here in Europe. Uh, sorry, I'm in Germany right now, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm bringing this software to the U.S. Um, I, ideally, if things go well, we'll we'll have a real impact in our in our industry, which is which is e-commerce. Um, now we, the, the company's story is great and it's literally, I'm here in a 7,000 person town that is, that probably has more cows than people. And then a six story office tower, uh, from the two brothers who founded it 20 years ago and we were bootstrapped until, uh, earlier this year, we actually, uh, secured hundred million in, in series A from, um, 
from PayPal and a private equity firm named Carlisle. Um, so I mean, for our for our expansion, but but my, my goal is you know for sure I'm going to jump on uh, was at the uh, the Chamber of Commerce meeting the other day, so I'll, I'll make sure that we're uh, a member in good standing there. And then um, I think maybe other relevant experience I did for my previous company, we had to uh, we had to create a U.S. based trade association, so a 501c6, and I. And oversaw the creation of that, and then the initial the initial funding from the ecosystem participants uh, to the tune of the first first couple of years. I think we did about a little under a million and a half in funding. But, but a lot of a lot of that was me going around with my you know with my hand out. I'm just trying to share the vision. Yeah. All right. I'll open up to other committee members. Um, I have a question, and that is. Um, there are slots on the ATAX committee that we have to fill. Um, the general um, slot, we had multiple applicants for that. So we didn't consider you for that, making it easier to get on the, on the board, on the committee, actually. Um, the other ones were hospitality, which you don't fall into, and cultural. And what is it about cultural that you have a cultural aspect that would fit into that slot? Just for our benefit. Well, I suppose I think it's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting question, and I suppose the the answer is either good or bad depending on on one's perspective. Uh, culturally, uh, actually, may I ask? So, what is may I ask what the goal of the cultural uh, member is? Is it is it Isle of Palms culture? No. Yeah. It doesn't have to be Isle of Palms, it's just cultural or arts. I mean, it's mandated by state that you have the committee be filled by, you know, certain um, members of, of the community. A diverse uh, representation. So yeah. you got yeah, so hospitality. Sure. Yeah, I think you'd been slotted in as the, you know, cultural yeah. for either musical uh, well, and attributes I, and I just, or that you're- I just had a gig at the, at the Dingy on yeah. Friday. Uh, actually, flew home. I was, I was at a trade show uh, last last week, it's been it's been uncharacteristically uh, busy travel for me right now. But uh, but I flew home early just so I could play today. So yeah, I've been, I played uh, I was in a drummer in a band, um, Travis Allison band. He's actually okay. until COVID had been playing in you know, Wild Dunes every summer, uh, every Sunday, and he lives over in uh, in Mount Pleasant. But uh, I still I, I still do get out to, to play music uh, every so often. Okay. So yeah, I guess, okay. I guess there we have. We have some qualification for you. Um, the other the other slots are hospitality, which of course is the rentals and resorts and inns and whatnot, and um, cultural and what's what's the other one? And then at large, it's yeah, just, at large. yeah. Right. So, all right, sounds like you'd qualify. Just want to make sure I can answer the question if somebody asks me. You know, if someone asks right, yeah. Yeah. It's due diligence and CYA. I know. So, Ben, uh, based on your qualifications, you got a pretty extensive business background. Sounds like what kind of attributes would you bring to the table for evaluating requests for funding from people who come to, or efforts that want to come to the ATAX committee uh, requesting funding for either this or that? How would you how would you go about the evaluation and how would you prioritize? Yeah, also, a good question. I so for me, it's it's. I feel a pretty a pretty strong duty to uh, well. So actually, let me, let me back up. So I, I feel like I have a pretty good intuition and understanding of the people of Isle of Palms and how how I think we would like our money spent. Um, I think I could never learn enough about the diversity of of, of opinions as they exist. And I recognize that, that, of course, I'll have to, you know, I'll have to um, maybe not infrequently think outside of, you know, my own preferences, my own interests. Um, but what I really like to do, and what I what I have a, I think, a pretty good track record of doing, is getting, is really understanding at an intuitive level, uh, you know, the, the 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 range of opinions and, and the range of thoughts on various matters. And then speaking to those, and then ideally being being as transparent about it as possible. Now, I, I assume I assume that there are some regulatory um, uh, concerns around 
transparency and how that how that works. And there are, there are times to speak up and share. There's times to gather opinions, and then there's times to act. So what I'd like to do is just start to get my head around uh, get my head around the stories that I've heard from ATAX uh, committee members, uh, including my former uh, previous neighbor, uh, Rusty, and and start to, I guess, start to help. So, well, I have, I have broader aspirations down the road uh, where I'd like to see, you know, where I think I'd like to see Isle of Palms head when it comes to how we, uh, how we invest our tourism dollars. But I think that starts with this process, getting to see things from this end and, um, and then maybe having a chance to uh, having a chance to to work my way up towards you know, potentially down the road since I'm planning to retire in five years, uh, even even making a move to be on be on city council. Cool. So Ben, uh, just to go off of that answer, the bigger aspirations just to uh, invest or spend the A tax money. What what kind of ideas are are lurking in that head of yours? Uh, well, I mean, me, so me personally, and, and again, I, I recognize that you know I have my own opinion. I, I'd really like to see us uh, us in full control of our uh, of the ATAX uh, considered a line item. But uh, I, I sure would like to see. Uh, I think I think Isle of Palms is uh, full of, uh, of smart, capable people uh, with you know the time, the experience, and the attitude to really spend those dollars, uh, spend those dollars on programs that matter. And, you know, and this, this, this extends out, this extends out into other areas. I mean, just in general, I'd like to see, I'd like to see Isle of Palms a little bit more in control of its destiny. Uh, so, you know, that, that definitely gets into uh, <laughs> it's, it's matters that the city council is, I think, currently uh, looking to address you know, things like home rule and, uh, Home rule, uh, who controls the streets, uh, and and really putting us in control of how we how we present ourselves to our neighbors in the surrounding communities. And for me, one of the I think one of the the biggest dangers that we have facing us is the the kind of the might of the state when it comes to uh, the this continued rapid growth in the Charleston area. And the, uh, I think over time, over the next five to 10 years, we're gonna feel increasing pressure to uh, give up more and more and more of uh, our, sort of our, our, what we would think of as our community resources to accommodate all of these people who are coming to the Charleston area. I mean, and, and the, mayor, uh, the former Mayor, mayor, mayor Car Carol and I did not, we did not always agree on everything, but I, I always loved his quip that, you know, we, you know, we Charleston keep inviting more people to come to this area and sell the beach as one of those aspects. Uh, it's one of those, one of those major factors of why you should come to Charleston. But he, he very famously said many times, like, we, we keep inviting more people, but we don't make more beach, right? So the, the pressure is going to be on every island community and uh, to somehow facilitate people's well constant state constitutional right to go to the beach and uh you know and and just growth in general because as we know uh depending on where you live on this island if you could have a, just a fantastic house but if you're surrounded by a bunch of a bunch of high dollar 14 bedroom rentals your quality of life uh can can suffer and it kind of takes away some of the some of the magic of what I think makes Isle of Palms Isle of Palms. Now we're going to have to we're going to have to deal with you know we can't stop the growth, but I think we can make we can make deliberate uh, deliberate and sort of uh, building steps to a future where Isle of Palms <coughs> is in control of its maybe more control of its destiny, and, and we're able to. Uh, and we'll make smart moves. So on from, from an ATAX, you know, step, I'd say like, hey, let's 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 continue to promote Isle of Palms. Let's let's make sure that our neighbors feel like they're welcome, that our street festivals and whatever programs that we 
have so that they know that we're we're out there taking good care of them but then let's also make sure that we're um we're, we're taking care of ourselves because what we want to avoid is where the island just becomes overrun as uh, let's just say mostly short-term rental place and all of the magic that brought each of us to the isle of palms just just it just dies a heat death and it just goes away hopefully that makes a little sense mm -hmm. thank you all right well ben thank you for joining us just to let you know the process today we'll uh, make recommendations on filling the ATAC committee openings and bring that to city council meeting tomorrow night, of which there'll be a vote. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, I appreciate all your time. I hope this process is not too much of a burden on you all. <laughs> no, it's fine. I think that the mass exodus, yeah. but hopefully we'll, we'll get things back uh, ship shape. And um, I look forward to hearing the outcome. And yeah. for sure, I'll, I'll make sure to involve myself regardless. All right. Thank, Thank you. you appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate y'all. Thanks. Cheers. What do we have now? We can see if Tony or Chaz are outside. Was it twenty minutes? Sounds good. Hi. How are you? Good. Yes. Jazz. How's it going? Good. Good. Hi. How are you? Well, thanks for coming in. Sure, thank you. So you're uh, you're applying for the open ATAX committee member, uh, the at large uh, committee member. That's correct. Yeah. All right. Well, why do you want to be a part of the ATAX committee? Wow, great question. So my wife and I uh, recently moved here around here seven months ago, um, and we absolutely love the we love to give back. Um, my experience, um, my professional experience has been solely in marketing for the last 30 years. Um, I have worked both on the agency side and on the client side and consultants, actually all three sides, uh, managing and executing multi-million dollar marketing campaigns for companies such as, oh my gosh, uh, all the fighting championship to History Channel to Williams Sonoma, um, and even in travel and leisure as it relates to um, um, the area of my school. So, backgrounds. So, I have extensive knowledge base um, working with both large corporations and startups. Um, and in looking at the newspaper um, and some of the, the challenges that were being presented, I thought maybe somebody with deep marketing agency experience would be able to uh, discern, uh, understand uh, how we can better either uh, improve the relationship with the marketing agency that is currently here or explore other opportunities. Okay. Um, other committee members? No, you can go oh, first. Uh, Chaz, can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how that would apply maybe specifically to uh, evaluating requests that come in for ATAX money? We do have uh, organizations that come that request for funding uh, beyond just the marketing. And there, are, uh, there are other buckets of ATAX money that go to support our services, such as fire, police, infrastructure, could go to bike paths, could go to all kinds of different things. And how, how would you address or you know, what kind of skill sets could you bring to the table to evaluate requests for ATAX money outside of the marketing side sure. of things? Great question. Um, my, my approach um, would be understand, first of all, the, the community at large and the overall needs across the board. Um, and to try to make sure that um, 
all areas are being potentially addressed in a fair and reasonable fashion. The second uh, consideration would be to the actual benefit, the cost benefit analysis to those situations. Um, and if um, those opportunities could perhaps springboard um, other positive outcomes, that would be my approach. Do you have any familiarity with the Charleston Visitors Bureau and the way that they handle the or the funds that we give them now? Uh, only from what I have, I have read in the newspapers. No. Okay, so yeah, don't go on that all the way. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a thorny issue with us now. I think that really could use a fresh look. Sure, um, sure. I understand. I mean, I, I understand that the dollars. Um, in, in the Isle of Palms eyes, these are sizable marketing dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and marketing dollars are basically spent in three ways. Okay. One is the media, that is the actual thing that reaches the consumer. Uh -huh. The middle part is the creative, okay, which is more of a fixed expense. The last part of it is the boots on the ground that are needed to create and execute and manage. So unless you have scale in your marketing dollars, you could, in theory, put out less marketing and have it more targeted or fit or efficient from a spend thing, from a spend basis, but not necessarily with the same reach. So that is a consideration you must look at when you're evaluating agency of scale. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I can understand the frustration, perhaps, of marketing dollars being buried in an overall marketing plan. Of course, I don't have visibility in terms of in terms of reporting and insight that have been prepared for you guys. Um, what I can tell you is industry best practice, so that and I have worked on both sides. So um, I understand what clients want, and I also understand mm, sometimes the games that are played. Um, but in many cases, um, the transparency may or may not be there. And for a lay person, it could be very frustrating for them to understand such a situation and it come off as less transparent. And, and again, I don't know at this point in time. I think the other issue that we need to consider um, as you look for a solution in this matter is you know right now the economy is vibrant we haven't had a hurricane we have x number of dollars to spend etc cetera, etc cetera. what happens if we get another era what happens you know when we have to go through a rebuilding phase and then a mass marketing campaign needs to happen to indicate that we are open for business um, those are some of the considerations that i would look into in depth as I analyze all the options on the table to ensure that the Isle of Palms has the best partner for them to, you know, execute their marketing needs. You've been here, you've lived on the island about a year and a half? A year and seven months. Okay. Do you view that as a benefit or a uh, or more of a concern into joining, jumping right into a uh, this committee. So I, I actually see it as as a benefit um, to the island. Um, I appreciate. I have neighbors who have resided here for years. They are wonderful people. Um, I respect the island uh, and its history and its heritage. Um, I want to ensure that we maintain a balance in that situation. However, at the same time, um, it is often uh, beneficial for people that have not been entrenched in, in news and information over time um, to come in with a fresh set of eyes and ideas that are not clouded or biased. Um, the other thing I'll mention is um, I also feel that the at-large position is basically in place to really um, look out for the residents in the general community because the other aspects of the committee are focused on hospitality and lodging. So I see that as a three-legged school um, with, with the oversight um, you know, being really the, the focal point of, of taking best interest to the community. 
Um, the last thing, you know, <clears throat> considerations, one of the things that I've actually pondered myself is with the newly formed Chamber of Commerce, whether or not there's a potential conflict of interest for a board member to be a member of the chamber when, if in, if in case we do transfer to a marketing relationship with them, you know, that is a conflict of interest. So with that being said, my goal would be to be independent during my time as, as managing through this committee. Question. All right, Chaz, well, thank, thank you, you for coming in. What thank we'll you. do is uh, make recommendations at the end of our day today here that if this committee will to council, which will be meeting tomorrow night and vote on it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. I thank, hope you. Have a nice thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's here, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Please come on in. Please come right to the table. How are you all? Good. Good. How are you? All right, thanks for coming in, Tony. Certainly, how are you? Good. Yeah. Um, so you're applying for the open ATEX committee member, the at-large uh, position. Right. So just to start off, why do you want to be a part of the ATEX committee? Um, a couple of different reasons. One is um, from a career perspective, I've been in the last couple of years, and that is starting to slow down a little bit. I'd like to get a, more involved on the island. Um, and it seemed like this committee um, could use a little, some of the articles that I've read and heard on the street is that it could use a little settling. And I think um, I have that nature about me. It's a, kind of a settling, a level head, so to speak, pragmatic. So what about you? Why don't you tell us a little about your background, your career, whatever, and especially how it may apply to some of the things you mentioned that are needed on the committee. Yeah, so uh, I'm in the special chemical business, and specifically a contract manager for special chemical. I've been doing that for about 28 years. I've had a business in Greenville, South Carolina, that I've transitioned to a couple different owners over the last uh, eight years. And uh, starting to back out of that quite a bit. Um, but of all that time, it's been mostly sales and marketing. And so looking at this ATAX committee and, and the marketing effort of the Charleston Minister Bureau and potentially the other Chamber of Commerce and even some other things, maybe looking at that from a sales and marketing perspective and, and trying to uh, evaluate and give some perspective of what's involved from a marketing perspective and uh, what the what we should be looking for, questions to ask, things to uncover, budgets and how they apply to um, the, the scope of work that I um, and with that I think that there are uh, that there's I haven't been in the lodging business or the, or the uh, hospitality, hospitality <laughs> type stuff, so I don't know a lot about that. You know, those businesses, I frequent them quite a bit. So that's <laughs> yeah. part of it. Um, but, you know, I haven't, being a DF, that large member, I think also helps to be a representative of the island and the people on the island. And I mean, I mean, the law, uh, Lived in Wild Dukes. We have well, yeah. I lived in Wild Dukes quite a bit when we had property there for. Uh, we had property there for 15 years before we moved down to the other end of the island over here. And so I know people on both ends were active all over the island, um, socially, and, uh, and so you know, kind of being at a large member, yields itself to picking up opinions from other people and trying to set the direction of, you know. From a growth perspective and, and putting tourists here, what, what, what do we want this island to be long term? And 
trying to take the perspectives of the island and bring them to, to the board, to the committee. Thanks. I'll open it up to other committee members. Yeah, of course. Um, what other, uh, just to, to give you some, to give us some background about you, what other boards and committees have you served on, both on and off the island? Um, from a business perspective, several mm -hmm. uh, committees and boards there, trade organizations primarily, mm -hmm. nothing from a real kind of professional because I was a small business owner in Greenville. Mm -hmm. I didn't sit on a lot of um, you know, other company boards there, but I was involved at the YMCA, church, neighborhood. I sat on all those boards there uh, at different times throughout the uh, and then from an industry perspective, set on a number of boards there. Since I've been here on the island, um, you know, the primary one was, you know, some of the things down at the Exchange Club, you know, uh, and boards on uh, the Exchange Club. All right. Um, pick one and tell us about your participation on that board. Make it a volunteer board, too. Yeah. Uh, make it one of the volunteers. So that would be the Exchange Club. and. This was probably, this was just before COVID um, started the fundraiser for the deer, the dog deer. Mm -hmm. Led um, some fundraising efforts with that with um, some pride gathering type stuff mm -hmm. for, for that. And then, you know, spread the word, did some marketing and advertising, was in charge of the advertising and marketing side of that. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. Tony, aside, aside from the <clears throat> marketing dollars that are uh, part of the ATAX uh, bucket of money, uh, there's other monies that go to services and infrastructure. Are there places or things on the island that um, you would maybe recommend or suggest that we either um, invest more money in or start to invest in to help support the, the tourism on the island? It may or may not be being done today. Well, you know, I think um, there's some traffic and parking up here. But I think, but I think, you know, with the traffic, uh, you know, not so much getting on the island, but getting off the island. We could just facilitate a little more flow off this island. Um, I think that would be helpful. The other um, parking, I think, is. Uh, oh, you don't want to talk about it anymore? <laughs> well, I think the rec center has a lot of potential to uh, to be a, a, a big attraction. Maybe not put beds on heads, but from a tourism and activity level perspective, I think the rec center could be is, would be enhanced quite a bit. We've got this, you know, we've got big parking lot right here and you know while the Isle of Palms every little island has its unique characteristics um Bali Beach and then Sullivan's Island and you know you got the Sullivan's Island you got the town with the with all the restaurants and bars right there on the street that's that's pretty nice we have the wind jammer so music is a big part of the, the feel of this island of uh, the live music and the dinky and the wind jammer but there's not really a place for, and that's mostly country and you know, classic rock and roll type stuff. But from a jazz and um, orchestral or symphonic kind of thing, there's nothing really here for that that I've seen. And so maybe doing something in that parking lot, summer um, type stuff, and have concerts, um, whether it's at the Guy Park or the parking lot, I think would be helpful. And, you know, we've got so many tourists. It's hard to imagine that we want a lot more tourists. Uh, you know, I think part of it is is determining what kind of tourists that we do want here. And, and what kind of dollar do we want them to spend and where do we want them to spend it? And help drive uh, the message out to the public. Thank you. Anything else? No. All right. Well, thanks for coming in, Tony. What we're going to do, this committee will make recommendations to bring the council for tomorrow night's meeting, and we'll take a vote there. Oh, you guys will decide at the meeting tomorrow.
That's what, yeah, we're, we'll make a recommendation to council at, for tomorrow night's meeting. Yeah. Okay. So will someone call me after yeah. the meeting tomorrow? Or? Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll notify you. Uh, they will they'll they're coming out of this meeting with a recommendation. Okay. And that recommendation will go to council tomorrow night. Okay. Super. Yeah. Uh, well, if I'm recommended, I would like for you council to come here. So folks can come to me back. Sure. sure. We can let you. We know. can let you know what the yeah. recommendation yeah. from the committee is yeah. today. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks, Tony. Well. Uh, Ruben was the last one. It's only two thirty. Yeah. Um, oh, so it's two fifteen. I don't know if he's out. Yeah. I'm ready for a break. Well, um, we can we we can have a take a break or we can go into executive session and you all can deliberate on ATAX and then come out and interview him so that we take. I mean, we're still about 18 minutes away from right. yeah. him coming. So we're going to make, that make a motion to go into mm -hmm. make yeah. a motion to go into executive. I make a motion we go into executive session. Second. Aye. 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 All right. All right.